Good friends, mm. nothing like it, you know. And I'm quite a nice way too. Like it's, it's a, it's a, it's very personal, it's isn't personal it? Personal and impersonal. You know, it's mm. a bit of both. It's a bit of you know. And the music's a great thing to do with as well because it's like we all love music, and you know, everyone has it's a so universal. Everyone has their own music, what they love and what they don't love, and and music's so personal as well. So it kind mm. of, yeah, it's nice. Oh, that's a lot of shit. Have I clicked record yet? Oh yeah, that's going. Huh? Chuck it closer to you because I can uh, already hear my voice at like three times the volume <laughs> of yours. So I want to know about your caravan. Oh, Maureen. <laughs> Maureen. Maureen, my caravan. Why yeah. call it Maureen? <laughs> oh, it's, it's a long story. So basically, once I got into tintype, I soon, I soon realised that the only way to, to do a tintype outside of the studio is if you have some kind of portable dark room. Because to do a tintype, to do a wet plate, you've got to basically prepare the plate, load the camera. Mm -hmm. Expose it within about or oh, within a proximity of each other. Yeah, within, well, you've only got really. It's called a wet plate process because the whole thing has to be done while the plate is still wet. Yeah, so, right. So you know, so on a really really hot day, you've got kind of eight minutes. Yeah, wow. On a colder day, you've got maybe fifteen minutes. So you have to have this kind of a dark room thing that you can mm -hmm. take with you. And a lot of people build these really kind of like a it's like a like a box or suitcase that you fold out and arms shoot up and then you put a big cloth <laughs> over it and you go inside it and. Yeah, right. You're doing everything in this little box, and yeah. so a lot of people do that. And I thought, nah, fuck, I don't want a box. I actually want something I can mm. travel around in. And so I basically found this old caravan that was derelict, and I just did it up an old '50s wood caravan. Mm. So I just basically did it up and turned it into a little mobile darkroom. And she's called Maureen because I did it up in my neighbour's place, Maureen's place. I said, Oh, Maureen, can I borrow your back? Her husband had died, and. They got rid of the car, so there's an empty spot there. And I said, oh, can I borrow your garage for, you know, your backyard for, I said, four weeks to do my caravan. And she said, yeah, no problem. It took like six months. <laughs> and Maureen would come out every day. With Shout her. out to Maureen. She Cheers, love. <laughs> yeah, Maureen would come out every day. She'd bring me a cup of tea and a scone or something every day for oh, like six sweet. months. So I had to call her Maureen. And, uh, but yeah, it's a great little thing because it means I can yeah. go off. I can just... Yeah, like what opportunities is it, has it given you that just wouldn't be possible at well, HQ. Well, again, you know, again, because I'm a commercial photographer, my, my idea was, well, you know, if a client comes to me and says, oh, we, we want to do a tintype campaign, I can go, sure, and we'll just load the caravan and we'll drive the caravan into Sun Studios, or if you want to go and photograph Uluru, we'll, we'll drive to Uluru. Or... So, again, it's, it's just given me, more, given me more opportunity, basically. Because mm. as, much as, as much as I love tintype, I'd like it to be a viable thing that I'm doing. So I'd like to be able to say I, I can make a living from it which they can do in America mm. and the States and, you know, and, and the UK and stuff. But Australia always is so far behind. So that's really what it was for, just to, to give me more, more opportunity down the track. Mm. And, you know, it's saying that, like, you know, in holidays, I go down the coast and I, I pack my caravan. My partner goes off and reads books and I, <laughs> I say, I'll be back this evening. So me and the dog go off and I'll, I'll do some landscapes, you know, so... Or I'll meet some old bloke in a pub and I'll do a pop-up in a pub and meet some old faces and do some portraits. I love that you do that. Yeah. Down at Stanmore and stuff. I yeah, that's, I, did, that's I, did, I, went, out, I went out west and I, I drove out sort of it, uh, around Taralga and Oberon and I, I did pop-ups out there and yeah, it's great. You just go to a pub and pull up and... Imagine some of those little old rural pubs. Yeah. They have these fucking dinosaurs in there. Just great like, faces. Mm. And you know, the wet plate process, it, really it, it loves a good face. You know, cause mm. it's, it's, I don't know if you know much about film, but... Film has a speed called ASA, so the faster the ASA, the less light, but the more grainy. So tintype, yeah, right. tintype is one ASA, right? So huh. it is so fine. There's no grain and it's pin sharp. So if you oh, do a yeah. portrait of somebody, you get every every mm. little bristle on their face, every pimple, every freckle, every every eyelash. It's mm. really beautiful. I find it always. I mean, the one you did of me, it seems to attach itself to certain features. Though, yeah, because the depth like of field you get this beautiful. The depth of field is so mm. narrow because you need so much light that you have to use the smallest aperture, which means your depth of field is only about a thumb, a thumb thick. Yeah, right. So usually, you know, you focus on the eyes. So usually, in a, mm. in a wet plate portrait, all that's sharp is the eyes. Yeah, you got my bug eyes and my fucking. And your mouth. Yeah, that's all that's sharp, depending on the lens, really. So, mm. which makes them quite powerful because. You know, to me, the portraits are taught about the eyes anyway, so mm. it's stronger. Yeah, definitely. Yeah.